Welcome back to All This Math. This is Professor Parker, and we're doing some ACT prep. And we're about to get into this next problem. You can see the problem printed in the description notes underneath of the video if you're watching this on YouTube. Now, this next problem deals with averages, averages, but it's not a straightforward average question. It really challenges you on understanding the concept of the formula that you use to compute an average, all right? So it says here, it says that Adam tried to compute the average of his seven test scores. And imagine this is you, you know, because one thing that makes word problems easier, in my opinion, is incorporating yourself into the problem. So imagine this is you and this is your experience, right? Then it goes on to say he mistakenly divided the correct sum of all his test scores by six. And if you ever calculated an average before, you know you're supposed to divide by the number of numbers or the number of scores or the number of data points, right? He divided by six, but he was supposed to divide by seven, but he made a mistake. He's human, mistakes happen, right? Which yielded 84, so he has 84 for his average, but that's not his average test score. That's not correct because he didn't divide by the correct number. The question is, what is Adam's correct average test score? How do we figure that out? Now, his average was 84 when he divided by six, right? So what you need to do when you see a problem like this is you need to figure out the total sum, the sum of all his test scores. So if he divided by six to get 84, can't we just do the opposite? Because what he did is he took his total, his total sum of all his test scores and then he divided. But instead of dividing by seven and breaking it up into seven equal parts, he divided up into six equal parts. So actually it kind of like um, inflated his grade actually too. It kind of inflated his grades. It was like a way to like, you know, so his grade shouldn't be at 84, right? Because you're not dividing your total test scores up by into six different parts. You divide it up into seven equal parts. But my point is this, we got to do the opposite. So what's the opposite of dividing? Multiplying. So we got to get back to that, that total sum of all his test scores. Make a note of that. We have to get back to that total sum of all of his test scores. We got to get back to the total sum of all of his test scores. So what we do is we take the 84, which was the incorrect average. And because we divided by six to get the 84, we got to work backwards. We got to multiply by six to get back to the total sum. I'll say it again. We got to multiply by six to get back to the total sum. So we got, we're going to do 84 times six to get to the total sum. So I like to do this mentally. You can use a calculator, but I like to do it mentally. Break it down into 80 plus four, and then multiply by six using the distributive property. Distribute the six to the 80 and the six to the four. 80 times six is 480. If you know your multiplication facts, you know that eight times six is 48. So 80 times six is 480. And then four times six is 24. So you gotta add those two numbers together. 480 plus 24, 480 plus 24. That is, 504. So this is the sum of his all of his test scores added up. 504. We just work backwards. He divided by 6 to get 84. We multiply by 6 to get back to the total sum of his test scores. But he was supposed to divide by 7 because he actually took 7 tests. He didn't take 6 tests, right? He like, you know, inadvertent, inadvertently inflated his grade, right? So now we got to take the total sum of his test scores and divide by the correct number, which is 7. So we got 504 divided by 7. Now, you can use a calculator for that. But what I would do is use, like, for mental math, I would use, like, a partial quotients method, right? I think of a number that's close to 504 that I know is a multiple of 7. I know 7 times 7 is 49. So therefore, I know that 7 times 70 must be 490. See, that's what you do when you got... When you want to develop that type of mathematical fluency. We would just figure stuff out without even needing a calculator. So look, if I know that 7 times 70 is, because look, watch this, watch this. Kind of looks like this. 490, and then what's the difference between 490 and 504? Now, this only works if the other number is also a multiple of 7. That's the only way this works. If the other number ain't a multiple of 7, then I can't use this method. And I might as well just get my calculator. You know what I'm saying? Because I'm going to have a decimal anyway. If the other number is not a multiple of 7. But look. 490 plus what equals 504? 14. See that? See, that? see, I love it when a plan comes together, right? You see how that, that works out nice and neat? Now, I already told you that 7 times 7 is 49. 
<coughs> excuse me. Seven times seven is 49. But with the zero on the end, seven times seven D is 490. So that means 490 divided by seven. This is the partial quotients method. While you break the dividend down in the, into parts and you divide each part by the divisor. So that's going to be 70, right? And then 14 divided by seven is going to be two. And then you just add these two numbers together. 70 plus two is 72. Nice little math trick. That's a little math trick called partial quotients. Partial quotients. So this, this right here that I just showed you, this is like the stuff that is being taught in elementary schools or is supposed to be being taught in elementary schools. And people are complaining about it because they say, oh, this is new math, this is new math. Well, look, let me tell you this. Let me tell you something. If more of us had learned this method and these methods when we were younger, we would have been better at math, right? We would have been better at math and we'd be better at math now as adults, right? Respectfully, we'd be better at math now and then we'd understand the so-called new math, right? So we shouldn't try to limit our children's opportunity to learn more advanced math and different methods of approaching problems. We shouldn't do that because we're hindering our children, even if we mean well. Unbeknownst to us, every time we complain about new math, we're actually hindering our children because we're planting the seed in their mindset that there's a problem with this and that they shouldn't, they in turn shouldn't want to learn. But think about it. If more of us had learned it, myself included, because I didn't like the so-called new math at first when I was introduced to it either, even as a teacher, right? If more of us had learned this when we were younger, math would have been easier for us. It would have made more sense. A lot of us probably would have, might have even went to college and majored in math. We might have went into STEM fields and STEM careers. Instead of being a lot of the people that went to college and was like, look, I know I want a degree, but I don't want to take no math classes. Or if I got to take math classes, I want to take as, as few as possible. And we'd be in a very different situation in our lives right now. But please don't like continue to like tell your children like or discourage them from new math because the new math is helpful. Because what the new math does is, the so-called new math, it explains the old math. It breaks it down. Like this method right here actually is a way to explain and help a child to see why long division even works. Whereas a lot of us, when we were taught, we were youngest, we were just taught to just memorize the steps. Don't ask too many questions. Don't worry about why it works. That's not, that's, that's not a, I don't think that's a good pedagogical method. I mean, you know, it's, it's quick, but, you know, it's going to come a time when you're going to need to know the, the concept behind it, right? And a lot of us didn't know the concept. And a lot of our children won't know the concept either if we keep discouraging them from learning the so-called new math. All right, so just something to keep in mind. You know, it's not that difficult. It's never too late for any of us as adults to learn this. So if you're an adult watching this video, you know, it's never too late, you know, because this is the partial quotients method, right? You break the 504 down into a number that's a multiple of the divisor and another number that's a multiple of the divisor and just divide those, right? Like, I don't know off the top of my head what five, that 504 divided by 7 is 72, but I do know that 49 divided by 7 is 7, and I know 490 is close to 504, so I could break 504 down into 490, and the difference between it is 14. And lo and behold, I got lucky, because 14 is a multiple of 7 also. See, this is that new math, right? Well, it's new math for some of us, because 30, 40 years ago, some people was learning this. I wasn't learning it in my schools I went to, but some people were learning this, you know? So, again, this is a privilege. It's really a privilege to learn this, right? It's not a punishment. So we should be looking at like new math, like, you know, like it's a, it's a good thing, actually. It's a benefit. You know what I'm saying? So yeah. So yeah, the answer is 72. That was the actual um, correct average test score, 72. And even if, you know, you didn't use this method, you are allowed to use calculators on the ACT. So you could have just did 504 divided by 7, you still would have got 72. You know what I'm saying? But yeah, embrace the new math. Keep practicing. I'll see you all in the next video. Peace.